Hey folks, welcome back to our channel. My name is Nigel and this is Off Grid Van Life where we look at off grid power, van conversions and everything in between. In this video, I am going to be installing this guy, which is the Bullfinch uh, Shower Point number 6088. Uh, basically, it's an external shower. Uh, it has this uh, pipe that uh, you plug into the mixer there and it then just activates and does its thing. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to be drilling the hole that I need into the side of my van right now and installing this and getting it all plumbed in. So let's get after it. You know that saying, measure twice, cut once? Well, I couldn't stress that more for what you're doing here if you're cutting a hole in the side of your van. All right, let's uh, drill a hole in the side of this van. The trick is to measure so that we know where we're going. <laughs> what I don't show you here is that I actually measured uh, probably three or four times, probably spent about 10 or 15 minutes being extra, extra sure that I was putting it in the right spot for the stuff that's behind this wall and that I wasn't gonna make a mistake here. So the tricky thing here was to position the shower unit in a place where it looks good from the outside so it's aesthetically pleasing and kind of fits with everything else in the van. Uh, but more importantly for me it was to get it right within the placement of the box behind this wall. So I really wanted the pipes to be hidden completely in that box and to be able to be fed through into the cavity uh, below the walk area uh, next to where the kitchen is and uh, to be able to hide the pipes there. So I spent quite a bit of time just figuring it out, trying it, placing the, the shower unit on the wall here and making sure that it was the right spot. At this point I didn't realize that the walls of my camper were as thick as they are and that this cut saw was actually a little bit too short for these walls. Fortunately, when I stuck my head into the garage and looked into that box uh, behind this door, behind this wall here, I realized that I had the hole for the pilot of the cut saw coming through the wall so I could drill through from the other side and line up the two holes with pretty good accuracy. And Bob's your father's brother. There we go, we cut through, looks good, nice and accurate. I was pretty happy with the results of getting that hole through with relative ease. All right. Marking out holes for your screws uh, is an important step, so I definitely would recommend drilling small pilot holes for your screws to fasten the shower unit into the wall. Uh, even if you're using self-tapping screws, it just makes it a lot smoother and a much neater job to get it straight. I just landed up using a two millimeter drill bit, and I think the screws that I was using for this were four millimeters. Uh, so plenty big enough. It's just enough to make it uh, catch and for your screw to go in smoothly and get everything straight. Back in business. We've got these things here. They're just your stock standard 
Jubilee clips. I really like these ones though because they have the actual uh, bolt in there as opposed to that thing that spins and turns these things. So I find these to be much more successful and hold a better, um, just seals the, the pipe up nicely. So what we're gonna do here is put the Jubilee clip over the pipe. Then I take a cup of water that I've boiled in the kettle and I just heat the end of the pipe up. Leave the pipe in there for a couple of minutes. It <coughs> gets it, or maybe a minute or so, gets it a bit more pliable. And when it goes to actually getting your pipe onto your fixture, it then makes it a little bit more pliable and easier to get on. Okay. Right. I'm gonna do the same with the red one for hot water. And put the pipe in the hot water for a minute. All right, okay, so those are both on right where we want them. Then I put the Jubilee clip down to where it needs to go. Okay, just double check that it will actually, yeah. So with them on the inside like that, it will go in, so. <clears throat> right. Okay, that'll now go in there. There is a rubber seal on this shower unit on the back, but I actually like to just put just a little touch of um, Cycoflex for two reasons. One is it'll help to just glue it in place. <clears throat> and then two, um, it just helps not to so we know for sure that we won't get any water coming into this hole. And then get my screws ready. and tight. Not too tight that we strip them. Sweet. That's us with that installed so I'm gonna leave that to dry for a few hours before we actually uh, do anything with the pipes inside because uh, obviously if we move that now then it's going to uh, <coughs> affect the seal so we'll just leave that open like that. It can just sit there and we'll, um, we'll come and look at it in a few hours once it's had a chance to dry. When I was planning how I was gonna install this external shower, I was pretty stoked when I found that I could very easily pass the pipes through uh, the cavity where my fresh and wastewater tanks are and have them completely hidden out of sight, uh, but more importantly, just protected from the garage area. So with the garage area, often we'll have bikes in there and various things, barbecues and stuff hanging around. So it's nice to be able to just put the pipes here where the rest of the piping is in the van and have it all hidden and protected from any damage or anything like that um, and it was also just a super easy install literally just pass the pipes through and then go through to the other side and pull them uh, and it was uh, very easy to get them all the way through
next job was to plumb them into the water system so i really wanted the ability to have hot and cold water it seems crazy to have this awesome heating system in the van and not make use of the hot water and so i just cut the outlet pipe that was coming off the heating system and plumbed the hot water tap onto that just with a simple t-piece um, so it's a half inch or a 12 millimeter t-piece just put that in i had some extra jubilee clips and it was a very simple install literally just plumb that in tighten everything up and uh, you're good to go the only thing with this is that i'm not a huge fan of moving these old pipes that have been there for a long time so like that one that you can see there that i've just cut uh, just because of the possibility of breaking a seal or anything like that and then having your system uh, leaking and because it's all pressurized um, it would be a bit of a pain to have water leaking in the bottom of the van uh, and uh, it would be difficult to actually keep track of that and source it and find it if you did and I've seen cases where you have these pipes leaking for ages before you realize and then it rots everything in the bottom of the van so you got to be quite careful with this and make sure that it's all sealed properly and that uh, you don't have any leaks. Once I'd done the hot water, I did exactly the same with the cold water. So I just took the pipe going into the heating system, cut that, put a little T piece in and joined it in pretty much exactly as I'm doing here. Uh, so my cold water would come from the inlet going into the heating system. Hot water would be coming straight out of the heating system right there, as you can see. Okay, so here's how we have put this shower in. So literally just cut into the cold uh, pipe feeding into our Truma heater there. And put the cold in there. And then we'll go in here. This is where you'll see just on the outlet of the hot going from the Truma. Just cut into that and got the hot from there. That all then just feeds in under the cavity uh, in the front of the garage here and comes out here as we can see left a bit of slack on the pipes but uh, that then just feeds into the back of the mixer down here which is the hole that I dug uh, drilled earlier and uh, goes out the wall there and I will show you what it looks like out here so if we take the pipe just adjust this here Take the pipe and put it on there, turn it, it'll open the tap and there we go, easy and then when you take this out it then just dribbles a little bit out there, just a little bit of pressure that was in there and then just a helpful tip with this thing, whoops, just uh, hold it up and open the top just to let the bit of water out that's in there so you don't have that leaking in the back of your van when you store this pipe away but yeah that's it installed you can close that little cap there and we are good to go and there we are that's how you install a bullfinch external shower into an Euromobile 810 motorhome i hope this video has been helpful uh, if it is i'd love you to leave a comment down below and just let me know your thoughts if you have a better idea or suggestion on how i could have done that i would love to know from you i didn't secure the pipes in the cavity uh, which i guess uh, some folk might think that you need to i don't think it's a big deal uh, they're gonna rattle they're gonna sort of vibrate in that anyway and whether you secure them with a metal fasting or something like that um, I'm not sure that it'll make a big difference in terms of the longevity of those pipes so we'll see if you think otherwise then let me know 
But yeah, uh, I hope this video has been helpful. If you are interested in any more content like this, then uh, drop a comment below and let me know what you want to see on this channel. We're going to be putting out some reviews of batteries over the coming weeks and uh, some trips as well in our van. So yeah, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Cheers.